Great to have you join us. In our first story, the Health Committee of Parliament is asking governments to allocate more resources for plans to prevent outbreak of coronavirus in Ghana. The committee says the 35 million Ghana cities allocated currently is not enough. Chairman of the committee, Dr. Kwabna Chumnuyama, tells Joy News more funds are needed to procure logistics to protect Ghanaians. He spoke to Joseph Opokogapo on Thursday. I think the committee met officers of the Ministry of Health, led by the Director of Ghana Health Service and the Director of Public Health, to brief us on our preparedness uh, against this coronavirus uh, pandemic. And uh, what dominated the discussions, obviously, was the need whether to evacuate or not to evacuate our compatriots in China. Uh, what we got from the ministry is that um, they are always assessing the risks between evacuating them from China and also keeping them in China. And the decision they have taken so far is that as of now, uh, they are not going to evacuate them, but they are still assessing the situation. Even though they are not coming, they've already prepared a place to keep them. The, the moment there's an evacuation, the moment they get the signal that assessing the risks, it is better to evacuate them from China. They will do so. They assured us that when that signal comes, they can do the evacuation in 48 hours, where they are really well prepared. And in addition to that, they are in constant touch with the uh, uh, citizens. They, most of them are students. They have uh, a, 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 a two-day video conference call with them. And so they are supporting them with logistics, uh, funds has been uh, given to the embassy in China. And then they are also assured that the Chinese government is also supporting them. So currently, or oh, everything is okay. They also added that they've even engaged the service of psychologists to try and assist them because most of them are traumatized now because of the fear of what is going on. So they need to be assisted psychologically for them to also be confident that the whole nation is with them. Still on the coronavirus updates, uh, the infectious disease center at the Tema General Hospital says it is ready to handle any case of the deadly disease now known as COVID-19. One of at least two facilities designated by the Ministry of Health to handle suspected cases, the center has 12 beds and 42 medical professionals with special training on standby. Medical Director Dr. Richard Anthony conducted Joy News round the facility. Matilda Gavi of our health desk has more. The Infectious Disease Center located on the premises of the Tema General Hospital was initially built to handle Ebola cases following the outbreak in 2014. It will serve as a holding bay and treatment center. It has a nurse's unit, changing rooms, washrooms, personal protective equipment room, and a few offices. Though it currently has 12 beds, officials say it could be expanded. Medical director of the Tema General Hospital, Dr. Richard Anthony says frontline health workers have been given training on identifying cases and how to handle them. I will have a screening process, those with cough and other symptoms similar to, which may not necessarily be uh, coronavirus, are screened and separated. But should we have a strong suspected case, the patient will be moved straight from the outpatient to the facility which has been earmarked for isolation or quarantine uh, which we have so the staff for the management of this case is already been sensitized okay. and we have the list ready should there be a case he explains the 42 health professionals will be running three different shifts should a case be identified uh, when there is a, a case of that nature, because it's a shift and one cannot stay in there for a very long time, at least you need no less than three shifts. And looking at one shift alone for a day, going through the three shifts, we need no less than 42 different category of staff, uh, which we have. So the staff for the management of this case is already being sensitized okay. and we have the list ready should there be a case. We have PPEs, that's a personal protective equipment. There is a dedicated team 
which is made up of a mix of health staff, okay. ranging from nurses, doctors, uh, pharmacists, administrators, even orderlies, okay. which are part of this emergency response team, which has been put in place in readiness for this uh, coronavirus, or we don't know what will come up even tomorrow. So it's an ongoing process. And in terms of logistics, we've been promised that should there be need to increase the number of PPs that we have, central government and Ghana Health Service is ready to do that. For now, he says they remain on high alert should a case be confirmed. For Joy News, Matilda Gavi, Tema. Meanwhile, the ranking member of the Health Committee of Parliament, Kwabna Minta Akando, says government needs to reconsider its decision not to evacuate Ghanaian students in Wuhan. He spoke earlier on News Desk. We never got to a consensus or we never voted on any matter whether or not to back government decision not to evacuate students from Wuhan. In fact, at a point in time, the chairman drew the attention of Dr. Nsiansari that he must dwell much on the explanations why government is not evacuating students. Okay, and he said that government position was that for now they were not going to evacuate students. The reasons given were that one, um, they are in touch with the students, two, they think that they are assessing the situation as and when the risk level is high and there's the need for evacuation, they will do so. But for now, there's not going to be any evacuation. Okay. And I came in as a ranking member the and I disagreed with them and I cited these instances at the meeting. At the meeting, I said that. Look, yes, nobody has contracted the disease so far, but I feel that you do not wait till somebody contracts the disease before you evacuate. You do not wait until the risk level is high before you evacuate. If you so think that there could be the probability of doing evacuation, then why don't you do it now when nobody has contracted the disease? Why do you wait till somebody contracts the disease before you do the evacuation? And when they told us about the initial budget, and the initial budget of about 35 million Ghana cities. And government has announced only 2.5 million. And we indicated at the meeting to them, this shows how committed government is. Government is not committed to the combat of this disease. How do you mean? Because they cannot bring you 35 million Ghana cities, uh, what do you call it, budget, initial budget, and they give 2.5 million. Not even half of the money. Well, maybe they are releasing it in tranches. In, in, so they give you 35. Look, we don't have the luxury of time as far as this corona, novel coronavirus. So this affects. is the health ministry, the Ghana Health Service. Did they complain that they couldn't work with the, with the amounts you of see, money? We have, we have this system in this country that government officials are quick to come into the media and whitewash government. We need to see what they are doing with the money, not to tell us. Well, this is at the committee level. There were no cameras there. Oh, we have our own cameras. We have our own cameras. My, my point is, media. this was a technical committee. So... They, they, I'm not sure they had any reason to keep anything away from, from committee oh, members. Oh, they do it all the time. I mean, we find out we have our a, a way of I mean, getting our own information and all that. But the point I am making is that, um, my sister, we still stand by the point that if His Excellency the President had his daughter in Wuhan by now, he would have reconsidered his decision. It's simple. Other countries are evacuating. I don't know part of the not, world. Not all countries I'm saying have taken their, countries. their nationals. I'm saying, I'm are you, are you saying you're not countries. convinced? I was because, because, because we're told that bring me a superior this, decision, this decision is based on expert advice. Look, it's, not, it's not the NPP there, there government deciding argument. not to do Listen, that. It is, it is, I mean, when ex technical people bring you advice, you interrogate the advice. I'm a ranking member. I also have access to technical advice. Don't forget, on our committee, we have not less than five medical doctors. So it's not as if we are ignorant about the whole matter. I lead them. And before I come and sit here and talk, I do my own consultations and I read. Okay? There are other countries, including Kenya, who have done evacuation. I don't know part of the world. Mr. Akando has, however, denied knowledge of a leaked memo from the National Health Insurance Authority directing release of some 100,000 Ghana cities to be paid to the Parliamentary Select Committee on Health as honorarium for a two day meeting last year. I contacted the ranking member the ranking member who was there at the time, and he says to me that he doesn't know anything about it. Yesterday, this news got... Is it anything about the meeting or about the money paid to members, the, allegedly? As for, as for sitting on national health insurance formula, it's our duty. Okay. So every year we do it. 
So, so what he doesn't know no, is that any and, money. And, and can you give me a name? This former ranking, honorable electorate. Okay. So I contacted him yesterday. I spoke to him. I said, I've heard this thing because I was not a member of the committee at the time. He said, No, he doesn't remember anything. And the committee members, both majority and minority, I've asked a number of them, especially those who were at our meeting yesterday. Okay. And but you, you do take on a room. You take uh, the, when you meet organizations like this, they give you something. No, not that I know. Really? No, that I know. You don't get envelopes. No, that I, no, that I know. You don't, because no, I know that Mama sometimes Vee, they take you to uh, Vee, either Ebre, if they take us you to go a place, to Akosombo. If they, if they take us to a place, okay, probably, for example, if we invite you to Parliament and you are prepared to take us to, let's say, Akosombo, as you are saying, and you will put the bill, that's your own arrangement. I want and us even, to... even sometimes, we as committee, I mean, as a committee of Parliament, we, we have our own budget to do certain things. So issues of coercion from agencies, I don't know about it. You have never received. I don't know about anything it. as T and T for know going about to cook for. Away from health, seven chop bars and two milling machine operators at the Asafunyoplan area in Kumase are to face legal action for preparing and selling food in insanitary conditions. The move marks a renewed action by the KMA Love and Insura FM Sanitation Enforcement Team to rid the city of filth and improve food hygiene across Kumasi. The team sees food sold in filthy environments at the popular Asafunyoplan bus terminal. Love FM's Erastus Asaradonko follow the team and now reports. The Asafo Nyoplan bus terminal is host to many eateries popularly called chop bars. It is also home to some of the most unhygienic places in the city. The sanitation enforcement team uncovered food sold in many of the chop bars who were prepared in the midst of unimaginably filthy environment. Foul-smelling choked gutters filled with decomposing organic matter sits at the center of these spaces which serve as kitchen for these eateries. Just within the premises of some of the chop bars, we found foul-smelling stagnated pools of water just a smelling distance from where clients sit to eat. Look at the place. Huh? Look at the whole environment. Why do you cook and sell to the public under this environment? Uh, we are going to close the entire facility. Mommy. We don't want to allow you to eat. In the midst of this squalor, the food being sold was uncovered, forcing leader of the team and the Metro Environmental Health Officer Isaac Basanyin to order for the seizure of food prepared for sale. I told you, I said, I'm going to be exposed to them. Maybe I'm sure I don't know what I'm saying. Environment, I don't know what I'm saying. I'm going to be exposed to them. I'm going to be exposed to them. I'm going to be exposed to them. Come on. The <laughs> Let's dismantle the whole thing. There's the whole thing must be dismantled. Two commercial milling machines found to be milling vegetables at the terminal was dirty, rusty, and tired with filthy looking clothing. In all, seven chop bars and two milling machine operators were served with summons to appear before court next week. Leader of the team, Isaac Basanyin, had a warning for food vendors. We've come to this bar, chop bar. Uh, one, the water that they are using in selling is, is very, very bad. When you go there, there's a well not protected, inhygienic, uh, it's a word that at least every, excuse me to use that word, every human being should not use that to cook for public consumption or even individual consumption is not the best. And then the items within where they are cooking is very bad. So we think we need to close 
the entire facility for them to change everything before we can, to improve on whatever they have done before we can ask them. However, we are asking them to come to court. We have issued a summon for them to come to court to explain why they are using one, that water in cooking to the public, two, in cooking within this filthy environment. We think it's not the best. People need to change. You are selling to the public. Why do you think about your money and then not thinking about the welfare or the health of the public? If you are able to use this water to cook for the public, then we need to be punished. So we have, we have first closed the, the, the staff facility and then we are taking the person to court. Your area could be next. Keep Kumasi clean. Make Kumasi clean again. We're still on the subject of sanitation and in the past, if you didn't have toilet facilities in India, you had little chance of getting married. No woman or man was ready to give out their daughter to open defecators for marriage. This was not a directive or government policy, but a standard set and implemented by the people themselves. Pride and dignity triggered in this fight against open defecation. So we ask, what lessons are there for Ghana? John News' Mahmoud Mohammed Nuruddin was in India and brings us more in the following report. Now, health officials in Tema are worried about the latest HIV AIDS statistics, which puts Tema far above any other region's figures. 1,222 out of the 14,900 people tested in Tema in 2019 alone tested positive for HIV. The Tema Metropolitan Director of Health, Dr. Sally Korte, says the trend in the last three years has been worrying. For 2018, we don't have the 2019 figures out yet, but for 2018, our prevalence was um, 3.6. Okay. And when we compare that to Greater Accra, what is for Greater Accra? I think Greater Accra was 3.1. Okay. And fine. so, yes, yeah, so we are quite uh, a bit above the regional, the yeah, the regional prevalence for um, HIV, mm -hmm. yes. But th that should be worrying. Yes, it should be worrying, yes. But um, we also like to look at um, really what, um, you know, like the figures and then, you know, compare them to what is really going on. So, for example, when we look at the three years, over the past three years we have in Tema, um, for 2017, out of a total of 7,498 people who tested for HIV, 1,432 were found to be positive. Okay. That formed about 19%. Mm -hmm. And then 2018, a total of 7,830 people tested, of which um, 1,156 were found to be positive. That formed 15%. Amazingly, though, um, in 2019, though the figures seem high, I realized that there were 14,900 people who tested, and then 1,222 were positive, and that brings it to a percentage of 8.2. Mm. So when you look at the, the, trend. the trend, it's actually come down a bit. That's but 2019. 2019, because we had a lot more people testing, about twice what was tested in, in 2018, and then... The, pre, the positive rate was just about the same. Okay. So it, brought, it came down to 8.2%. Okay. Yes, we would say that if you look at the, over the three years, we say, oh, in that case, it has come down. Mm -hmm. But um, the truth is that we believe that maybe over the years, we've all become a bit complacent about HIV. Okay. You know, long ago, it became such a scare, and then everybody was jumping all over the place about HIV. And when it seemed to be stabilizing and coming down, we all sort of relaxed. But um, the complacency has not helped. So we want to say that even though um, percentage-wise it has come down, there is still that threat of um, HIV spreading. Mm. And we have to all be alert, we have to be on our guard, and we have to spread the word, okay. you know, that HIV is still a menace. Now the Tema Metropolitan HIV Program Coordinator, Francisca Adre, uh, attributes the trend in to careless lifestyle and low publicity on the disease. Looking at the age group, no, we have the working age from 25 to 59. They are the mostly people that we normally tested. Okay. And then the positive also fall within those groups. Okay. That is why we are most worried because they are the working force. 
Mm -hmm. uh, we also uh, want to appeal to people, uh, NGOs, organizations, and all the people that matters to come on board to help us because the HIV, it is in tema. Because the prevalence is high, based on that, we are seeing that the disease is in tema. Why does it look like tema's case is even bigger than the original? Okay, based on that, we can say that tema is a harbor city and people travel all the way from far and near, look for job in Tema. So Tema, because of the uh, harbor city, the people coming on board or coming to the side in Tema, looking for work is uh, more. And you know these people, some of them are uh, long uh, distance drivers. Mm. Some of them, they are, excuse me to say, uh, uh, female sex workers. So this account for the high prevalence in Tema. Back to Kumasi now. And the NPP constituency executives in Ofori Chrome in the Ashanti region are pushing for a second term for their member of parliament, Dr. Emmanuel Mafo. They back the first time legislator to run unopposed in upcoming party primaries to enable him seek re-election to retain the seat and enhance ministerial ambition. Over 100 delegates went on a procession to the party office to pick nomination forms for Dr. Mafo. Nana Sensumenta has more in this report. Constituency Chairman Abraham Kwame entry says the executives are united on the issue as a reward for loyalty. He says Ofori Chrome contributed over 80% vote in the constituency for the party's victory in the 2016 general elections, which must be consolidated this year. Telling the whole Ghana that Ofori Chrome is one, unity. It's our focus. We are here this morning to pick our incumbent member of parliament, Dr. Emmanuel Kapnamafo, the, the sitting MP member of parliament for Oforukrum. He wants to contest for the second time, and we are here to pick his nomination form. You've seen the number of delegates here. It tells you that the exuberance, the happiness, the joy, the enthusiasm that the delegates in the Chrome are having in their heart to support the member of parliament for four more years. Mr. Anchi says it is the only way to ensure accelerated development in the area. He betrayed the constituency is in no mood to lose any chance of high responsibility for Dr. Malfo in the next MPP government. Yes, I am saying that Ofori Chrome is one of the largest constituencies in terms of voter population. As I speak to you, we have a population of over 127,000. In the just uh, in the 2016 elections, we provided more than 61,000 of votes. Now, I am saying that it is a bigger constituency. We have the numbers. The caliber of our candidate is also up. Therefore, what I'm saying is that we, we as a constituency should be able to assert ourselves as a ministerial constituency. I want us to work together as a party, unite together, turn out very high, voter turn out high, results for the MPP very high. On that note, we could make a point to the power holders that our constituency deserves to be a ministerial one. And I'm saying this can only be achieved when we are united as constituency executives, as coordinators, as pooling station executives, and then we are able to bring out the figures. Election season is heating up and you can trust your election headquarters, Joy News and Joy FM, to have all the updates on the 2020 polls. You're live on Joy News today with me, Daniel Dazi. Up next is Daryl Crow with Business. Thank <laughs> you.